And that takes us to our first parameter. So if we look here, our first parameter is called threshold. And you can see it has these numbers going from 0 to negative 50. And this is in decibels. So what is the threshold? The threshold is the most important control on a compressor, if you ask me. Because basically what that means is where you set the threshold is the level at which the compressor is going to start to work. So I have this, this electronic drum track loaded up. And it's comprised of a hi-hat part. It has a kick sample, a bass drum sample. And it has two snare drum samples that are making up the snare sound. And I put those all together in a single track in Logic that I labeled drums. Now in Logic, it's called a track stack. And that allows you to group individual tracks and to process them as one. So in this case, I had four elements that make up the drum track, which is common. There'll probably be more a lot of times. And I grouped that into a single track because I want to process all of the drums as one track. So on that track, on the drum master track, I opened a compressor. I'm going to play this back right now, and I'm going to show you how the threshold control works. Okay, so right away, you can see that that needle was jumping. And so what that means is this is really the amount of compression that you're using. So since I have it at zero, it's barely being triggered at all. And you can see that it is still being triggered because the input signal is a little bit hot. And we can see that right here, it's actually clipping. It's going over zero dB. So it's in the plus range. So I'm going to use my input gain control to reduce that. I want a little bit of space to operate. So I'm going to get it sort of right around minus three. Okay, that's better. And you can see it's not pinging the needle now. Now I'm going to slowly bring this threshold up. And as I do this, this is going to be the amount of compression that is applied to your signal. So if you just want the compressor to barely touch your signal, you want to keep it in this range. You want to keep it from 0 to minus 5. So I'm going to slowly bring this up. Okay, so you can see here. So that's going to about 3, right? So let's move it up a little bit more. And I'm not really looking to even at the value here. I'm looking at the needle. And again, this is modeling a real hardware compressor, so it would have this VU meter, and that's what we use to measure the effect. Now, Logic also has this other version, which is more modern. You might see this in more modern compressors in your DAW. So this is a graph, and it's actually showing you the transients as they come in, and it's showing you the reduction here. And you can actually see graphically what the compressor is doing. So let's go back. And so the more that I bring this up, it's the more the compressor is going to act on this signal. So I usually personally don't go above minus six. Um, but of course, there are no real rules. You can do as much or as little as you want. Um, if I keep turning this up or down, you can hear how it's affecting the sound. Now I'm just going to level this out. Okay, I'm going to peak right around zero. So this is the most compression that we could add in terms of the threshold, which is actually a lot. So let's bring it down and let's listen to how it's affecting the sound. So that's no compression at all. And this is all the compression.
it can be hard to describe what a compressor does sonically. To my ears and what you hear is said a lot of the time is it acts as a glue. And so it really gets signals working together a little bit better. It's like adding a sauce to your dinner when you're cooking it. It puts all your ingredients in common, right? It gives them a common denominator. And compression really does that for audio. And it also just, it kind of flattens things out. And sometimes by flattening some transients out, it can actually make them pop out more in the mix. It seems counterintuitive, but most people use compression to do that. They want to give their signal a little bit more of an edge. You might want to make it a little bit more focused and central in your mix. So you add some compression just enough to make it pop out of the speakers a little bit more. Or you can use it as a coloration tool. Again, if you want to just make this signal a little bit unique. Again, it's kind of like a seasoning, you know, it's like putting, it's like putting hot pepper in your dish. You're, you're giving it a little bit of character or you can use it where you're not doing that at all. And you're being totally clean and you just literally want to tame your transients a little bit, but you don't want anyone to even know that you did that. You don't want anyone to be able to hear that you were taming these transients. So you use a clean opto compressor or something of that nature. Okay, that's the threshold. So the threshold is really, it's the level that when it is passed, the compressor is going to start working. If it's all the way down, it's not really even doing anything to your signal unless you are trying to attenuate it or if you're trying to amplify it. Okay, so let's go now to the ratio control. The ratio refers to, so when a transient crosses the threshold that you set, the ratio is the amount that the compressor is going to reduce that level. So if you have it going at a two to one ratio, that would be considered a light amount of compression, a small amount of compression. What it's doing is every time a transient crosses the threshold that I set, it's going to reduce by the specified amount. So if let's say if I exceed the threshold by two decibels, well, if you have it set to two to one ratio, the compressor is gonna, it's going to attenuate that transient by four decibels. So it's a two to one ratio, right? So if I cross the threshold by two, if I, if I go above the threshold by two decibels, the compressor is gonna attenuate the signal by four decibels. So you can see that since it's a ratio, you can see how that could really add up. So if it was the same example, if I had it set to five to one and that same transient crossed the threshold by two decibels, now it's gonna attenuate it by 10 decibels. So that's a much tighter amount of control, right? And this compressor goes all the way up to a 30 to one which is would be an extreme amount of reduction in the signal, right? And when we get up basically over 12 to 1 ratio, 20 to 1 ratio, we're basically limiting. And a limiter basically acts as a hard cutoff for audio material. You might have heard it referred to recently as a brick wall. And that means that it's really just stopping. It's giving a very firm volume threshold that the signal cannot pass. I personally, again, like to use lower ratios unless I'm deliberately trying to affect the tone of the signal that I'm working with, and then I'll use a higher ratio and I'll try to push it a little bit more. Okay, so that's the effect the ratio has. Let's, let's listen to it though. So let's go to a two to one. Okay, and let's use the same drum loop I have. So let's bring up our threshold. All right. So we can hear, and actually let's look at it. So every time the threshold is breached, the compressor is pushing down on those transients at a two to one ratio. So let's bring the ratio up and see what happens and also listen.
Okay, see that? So it's really pushing them down. And so what's happening is now the transients are more uniform between the kick and the snare. Before, the kick was louder. See that? So here, this is the kick and this is the snare. Now watch just by putting it to five to one. So it makes them almost the same. Let's see what happens if I keep pushing it. Let's go to 12. Okay, so now it looks like the snare is getting clipped a little bit. It's kind of uh, squaring off the transient instead of letting it be a peak. Let's go more. Okay, and it's having a similar kind of squaring off effect. Now, what's happening to the sound? As we get higher, it sounds like there's pressure that's being added to the signal, right? And that's kind of what it ends up to be in your ears. It ends up to be this kind of pressure. So if you are compressing too much, how do you know if you're over compressing? Well, it's because you can hear it. And too much compression sounds like too much pressure in your ear and it causes fatigue over time. So if you're listening to a, a song or an entire album that was over compressed, you'd actually feel tired after your ears would hurt because it's sending too much pressure to your eardrum. So there's kind of a sweet spot, right? Where you can get your compression where it's adding to the signal. It's making it sound more pleasing, more engaging, more energy, more three-dimensional, but not to where it's adding too much pressure. So in general, I would say stick to lower ratios unless you are working in a very specific situation if you are wanting to limit the overall mix, maybe you're putting the compressor on the master bus and you want to compress your entire mix, then I would probably use a higher ratio and a low threshold because we want it to just touch, to kiss the very peak transients that come through. Okay, so that's the ratio. What is the makeup? Makeup stands for makeup gain. And this is the manual setting. So this means after the compressor has done its job and it's dynamically reduced your transient, now the volume is actually gonna be lower, right? Because that's what it just did. It lowered the amplitude of your transient. So if you wanna bring it back up in amplitude, this is a post control. So this would be a post gain knob that comes after the compression has happened. Now, some compressors have an auto gain setting. And if you have it on, it's going to set the makeup gain for you. Honestly, I would just do that unless you have a very specific place that you already know exactly where you want this signal to set, then you can set it. And by all means, do that. If you're not really sure and you want just kind of the compressor to handle that and just compensate, for the reduction that you've made, you can use the auto gain. And it automatically sets it to minus 12, and I think that's so the signal doesn't peak. It gives you room still to process it after the fact, because we have other controls here. We have a limiter, we have a distortion, we have a mix, and we have an output gain. So we can still process the signal even after the makeup gain. 